Thanks very much for that introduction. So, uh, yes, I'm the director of uh, technology at Element Software. We're based in Galway City. We uh, set up about a year ago, and uh, we're currently expanding into the US market. We're uh, in the process of opening a sales office in New York. And uh, if I had known the, uh, the two previous presentations were going to cover a lot of my content, I probably wouldn't have shown up today. I thought about sneaking off the stage, but probably wouldn't have worked. Um, so just to get an idea, we saw a show of hands earlier on uh, how many of you have mobile apps for your business. Uh, just wondering uh, how many of you are analyzing your statistics from those mobile apps, analyzing usage. Hands up. OK. OK, interesting. So the, the good news for those of you that have mobile apps already, we've seen a few stats already. Um, this was published in June or July of this year. So according to Flurry, they're a, a mobile analytics firm. Uh, the average US user spends more time per day using mobile apps now than surfing the web. So uh, it's a good time to get into mobile apps if you're not already there. Uh, OK, so we're going to talk about a few aspects. Um, we're going to spend most of our time talking about uh, the user experience. I'll try and keep this as relevant as possible to classified media. Uh, I'll touch on statistics gathering for mobile apps, and uh, finally uh, discuss a few elements of the development process that are particularly relevant to mobile apps. So uh, first up, the user experience. So as was mentioned already in the presentations, uh, a clutter-free user interface is, is important. Um, obviously, screen size is smaller for mobile devices. You need to uh, present the most relevant information as quickly as possible to your users and eliminate any irrelevant information. Um, responsiveness is crucial. Um, mobile users are impatient of, of sluggish interfaces. Uh, convenience is, is the key word, really, for mobile apps. Um, an app has to make things faster and easier for your users. And uh, finally, apps should take advantage of the smartphone technology available to them, uh, something that differentiates differentiate, uh, the experience from the desktop uh, experience. And one of those is location awareness. So we'll look at that as well. OK, so Clutter, you can see here. Um, you know, a, a screenshot of the eBay homepage. There's a lot going on. You have ads. You have top-selling items, categories, lots of links, lots going on. If we compare this to their iPhone app, uh, you can see that there's a, a summary of information very relevant to the user, a few clickable links, and a menu bar at the bottom. So uh, mobile users are generally more focused on their goal than a web user. So like I said, you need to present the relevant information and eliminate anything else. Now, um, responsiveness uh, is crucial with mobile users. Um, you know, Desktop users are used to slow loading times and, and waiting for things to download, but mobile users are not. So you need, to, um, you need to make sure that the app is responsive at all times. It has to behave as expected. If an app is, uh, is confusing or behaves unpredictably to a user, they, they won't use it. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that uh, a lot of apps you know, have to download a lot of data in the background. Where possible, this should be cached, or at all costs, it must be hidden from the user, and the user interface must remain uh, responsive at all times. Um, another thing to remember is that uh, Apps get interrupted. By nature, they get interrupted by, by phone calls, by um, text messages, by other apps. So it's, it's crucial that your app remembers what it was doing or remember what the user was doing before it terminates. So uh, you know, an example, a user is using an instant messaging app, typing in a long message to their friend. They get a phone call that interrupts the app. They talk to the person come back to the app later, and they've lost their data that they entered. So this kind of thing will frustrate users very quickly. Now, convenience, uh, this is what it's all about, really, for mobile apps. Um, we're going to look at a few ways to make things easier and faster for your users. Uh, so here we have a typical example of a user uh, searching for something on a classified media website. So there's nothing new here. Type in URL, um, possibly log in with username and password, enter the criteria, and find their potential items. So. 
The problem with this experience is that in a lot of cases, depending on the website, um, the, a lot of the steps need to be repeated every time the user uh, wants to consult the same list of items. So how can the mobile app make this a better experience? So obviously there's no typing in of URLs. Uh, you know, let's face it, typing on a smartphone is, is not fun. So obviously the user just taps the icon, they're straight into your app. Um, again, typing usernames and passwords, a repetitive task that the impatient mobile user doesn't, doesn't appreciate, so uh, an app should automate login where possible. Uh, saved ads, um, this is something probably familiar to most of you. It's implemented on a lot of websites. Um, it gives the user ability to, to shortlist items that they're interested in and consult them later. Now, another level of convenience that is not, it's not used as much as saved ads is saved searches. And this gives the user the ability to save their criteria so that they can relaunch their search with a single tap at a later point. Now, the interesting thing about saved searches is it gives rise to, to another possibility, and that is uh, push notifications. Does everyone in the room know what push notifications are? Hands up. OK, most people. So push notifications are alerts that uh, get sent to apps. They're similar to uh, a text message. As soon as the alert comes in, the user clicks it, and it launches your app. Um, even if the app is not running on your phone at the time, uh, uh, an alert to push notification will wake up the app and get your user into your app again. And you can have your app react differently to push notifications. You can have it display a message, display a website, uh, run a video. Um, you know, video, as we saw, is key at the moment. You saw the stats on YouTube. Um, a very engaging method. You know, users don't really want to read lots of text anymore. Video is much more engaging. So all that is possible with push notifications. And um, yes, here we go. So uh, the, the thing about mobile users, well, if you take a standard desktop web user, uh, you know, the first experience they have with your site, uh, they might, um, you know, they, they, they're sitting at home, they, they're in front of their desktop, they have a large screen, they have time to go through uh, your website and discover the, the, th the things on offer from your business. A mobile user oftentimes will be, you know, standing in a train station, uh, eating a sandwich, um, you know, talking to the person next to them, uh, listening to music. So you, you need to engage uh, your, your mobile users. They're a tough audience to engage if you if you manage to engage them in those first few, few seconds, then you might gain a customer. But if you fail to impress, uh, then the, the user might never launch your app again. So it's important to engage. It's all about user engagement, as we saw with the presentations earlier. And push notifications provides a method of engaging with your user over time. Um, I was at the, uh, the Dublin Web Summit there recently. And uh, there was an interesting story from the CEO of, uh, of Rovio. Does everyone know about Angry Birds, yeah? I think so. So interestingly, before Rovio released Angry Birds, they released a, another app, uh, another game. And at the time, they, they, um, they, had, they had finished the development, but the game wasn't fully polished. They hadn't completely streamlined the, the look and feel of the game. But they decided they would release the game as it was, and then uh, work on the polishing and the perfecting of the user interface as they went along and released an update to the game. Um, that uh, didn't work at all. The game was a total failure. Users rejected it. So they learned their lesson. And then before releasing Angry Birds, they, they really spent a lot of time polishing the look and feel to get everything perfect before releasing. And for anyone who doesn't realize the extent of their success, uh, users spend, I think, over 300 million minutes per day uh, using Angry Birds. So that's, that highlights the, the need to, to streamline your user experience and to create a good impression and, um, and engage your user. So um, push notifications, how are they relevant to social media or to, to classified media, sorry? Um, so what you can do is, uh, if I'll give you a couple of ways in which this is applicable to, to your business. Um, a user is uh, searching for accommodation or, or job hunting in a large city like Paris or London. Uh, it's important to be up to date uh, with the latest information. So what a user can do now is save their search criteria on your site 
uh, that gives your, your servers the power to know what they're looking for. So you get to engage with them rather than waiting for your users to come back to you. So um, in this example, uh, rather than forcing your users to keep uh, searching, keep entering their criteria, keep refreshing their searches, now uh, your servers monitor their criteria. And when a new ad appears online that is relevant to them, you engage them. You, go, you send them an alert and say, look, there's a new apartment here you might be interested in. So a powerful means of engaging with your users. Uh, another, um, another example where speed isn't so important, it's more to do with patience. Uh, if you consider a user that is looking for a rare or a luxury item, uh, they might come to your site, they might spend, you know, search over the course of a few days, a few weeks, and might find nothing and, you know, potentially abandon your site at that point. Well, push notifications and alerts provides a means of getting that user back because you can continually monitor their search criteria, and when something crops up, maybe weeks or months later, you can get that user back and engage them again. So a strong, uh, a strong um, way of engaging users in, and holding on to your clients. Now, um, I mentioned that apps should uh, take advantage of, of the technology available to them, and obviously one of, the, one of the big hitters here is location awareness. So this can add a lot of context to the user experience. Um, you can search, uh, sort your search results by distance, display driving times uh, next to each search result, um, see directions, obviously, to an item's location, uh, give the user the option to only search within a certain radius of where they are right now. All these delivering value that you can't get at, on, a, on a standard web interface. Um, so take an example, a, a user searching for a, a second-hand car. They only want to, they want to stay within 10 kilometers of where they are, and obviously the closer the better. So they sort their uh, search results by distance. Now the future of this and, and the next thing coming, the next trend in mobile is combining push notifications with location awareness. So uh, take the same example, the same guy is still looking for a second-hand car. Uh, but he's visiting his friend in a different city. And when he arrives in that city, he gets an alert on his phone saying, hey, there are two cars in this city that you might be interested in, they match your criteria. So again, a very, uh, a very good way to engage with your, your users. Um, so it, it, the, the latest combining of location awareness and push notifications is, is a way to connect users with their local environment, local events, uh, where to eat, where to socialize, um, all that kind of thing. So, looking more now from a business point of view, um, obviously uh, business owners and decision makers like to know how their investment is performing. And the great thing about apps is that it's very, uh, it's very simple to incorporate detailed statistics. Um, so, you know, you start with something simple like number of downloads and number of unique users, but you can really get very detailed uh, like how much time users are spending in your app, uh, what features are being used most often, um, you know, down to how many times a particular button is clicked, uh, how many times a screen is viewed in portrait or landscape orientation. There's really a lot you can do. And this is, this is great for, um, from a business point of view because you can, it, it gives you the option of reacting to your mobile market. You can, you can see how your users are interacting with your app you can then um, you know, release an update that enhances some of the popular features of the app, uh, maybe removes features in your app that aren't being used. So it gives you a way to, to monitor and, and react to your mobile market. Um, so for anyone who isn't already doing this, I'd strongly recommend incorporating detailed statistics gathering into your, um, into your apps. Finally, um, just some quick points on the development process. Um, Kuhn covered uh, a lot of this already. Um, it's very similar to any software project development process, but there are a few things to keep in mind, one being graphic design. So um, as I mentioned, it's, you know, an app might only have a matter of seconds to make a good first impression on, on a busy, impatient mobile user. And uh, the best way to do that is to have a really slick, good-looking user interface. Um, so the role of of the graphic designer in a mobile app project is crucial. Um, you have to, you know, apps have to be inviting and appealing, 
and they are qualities that are not always easy to achieve on, on small screens. So back-end capacity testing. So w with apps that rely heavily on server integration on you know, XML feeds and that kind of thing, uh, it's important to be confident in the ability of your, your servers to keep up with demand. Um, you know, take an example, you have 10,000 users all requesting the same resource from your server, and your server is on its knees. Uh, you know, those 10,000 users are going to be standing there waiting for your app to respond. So not a good thing. Think about responsiveness again. Needs to be needs to be quick. Mobile users run quickly. Um, again, live trial, similar similar story will give you the confidence uh, to in your servers before releasing to the public. Um, we worked on a project there recently where. Uh, the app sent over 250,000 requests to a server in the period of three days. So uh, important to be ready for this kind of demand. Uh, finally, it's a good idea to plan for some maintenance and updates. Um, so aside from you know, maybe resolving bugs or issues that your users are having, um, updates are a good way to remind users that they do, in fact, have your app on their phone. And uh, rolling out new functionality in an app is always a good way to keep users engaged as well. Uh, so that's, uh, that's actually the end of my presentation. Um, I hope I've given you a few things to think about. hope I've made it relevant to, to classified media. And uh, if anyone would like to get in touch uh, to discuss anything, there's my email address. And otherwise, I think we're opening it to, to questions for both Kuhn and myself now. Mm -hmm.